salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Really appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to join me for today's video. Now, quick heads up, uh, it's about 6.30 in the morning, but I wanted to get this content out to you guys at the usual time, so I'm grinding it early in the morning. That being said, my son is sleeping in the room next to me, so I'm gonna bring the energy down quite a bit. That way I can hopefully let him sleep before we have to do school in a couple of hours. Promise I will pick it back up in my wide receiver, tight end, and defense videos, but we're gonna go a little bit more low key for this one. So what do I have in store for you today? We are gonna go over the top 32 options at running back. I want to give you guys all the information that you're gonna to need to make some crucial roster decisions. As usual, I have my tier cutoffs to help you guys understand where those drop-offs go and where you wanna prioritize getting people into your lineups. Now, if you guys have not been to the channel before and this is your first time, welcome. Would greatly appreciate a subscription on the channel that keeps the channel growing. Moving forward, we just hit our goal of 500 subscribers. We're moving forward to the next, looking for a thousand, and you can be one of those to hop on the bandwagon and join us. If you guys find yourself halfway through the video and you are enjoying the content, a like on it would be greatly appreciated as well. And with all that out of the way, let's hop into week 11's running back rankings. In at number one, it is Saquon Barkley against Detroit. And I'm not gonna lie, I am a little concerned with the amount of touches that Barkley is getting. He's racked up 112 in the last four weeks, and he had a ridiculous 36 touches against the Texans. Now, it is very possible that the Giants are not gonna need him in this game for more than 20 or so, and I doubt that they push the envelope with him. Now, does any of this matter? Probably, hopefully not. Barkley, either way, is going to crush the Lions. Austin Eckler is up next. He's in the number two spot. He's racked up 12 targets or more in three out of his last four games, and he's probably gonna do close to that once again against the Chiefs. I expect fireworks in this matchup with Eckler at the center of it for LA. I think he bounces back after his worst performance since week three. My next man up is Derrick Henry. He got absolutely nothing going against that ferocious Denver front, but the Packers run defense is certainly a different story. Henry has just 36 carries over his last two games, and that's after having 30 plus in each of the games in week seven and eight. I think that makes him fresh here and ready to crack some skulls in the box. Christian McCaffrey is up next at four. He travels to Arizona. He had a rather quiet week last week against the Chargers, and I would not be surprised if we continue to see Elijah Mitchell very involved in an effort to keep CMC healthy for a playoff push. We do know that even with reduced touches, CMC is going to ball. Jonathan Taylor rounds out my top five. I'm not sure where this dude was all season long, but JT demolished a beatable Vegas line, and he's probably licking his chops for an encore performance after what Washington just did to Philly on Monday night. And at the top of tier two at six is Nick Chubb. He is looking for his second straight four touchdown streak of the year after getting in as predicted against Miami. Buffalo looked pretty good against Dalvin Cook on all but like one run last week and we know that all that Nick Chubb needs is one of his own to do damage. Joe Mixon is next at seven. A bye week and a tough matchup combined are probably enough to cool Mixon off after his historical showing last week against the Panthers. Joe is gonna get a ton of looks in this game though, and he's been an RB1 in three out of his last four, so I would just sit back and keep enjoying the ride. Dalvin Cook is my eighth ranked running back, and after last week's performance, both by him and the defense he is facing in Dallas, my thoughts have changed on this game significantly. Dalvin hit nearly 22 miles an hour on his 81 yard touchdown against the Bills. He showcased that fifth gear that we have not seen a lot from him thus far. With the Cowboys giving up 200 yards in the ground against the Pack, Cook has some big time upside. To the top of tier three, Josh Jacobs is in at nine. He has to face this Broncos defense that just stymied the King for under three yards per carry. However, the last time these two teams met up back in week four, 
Jacobs finished as the overall running back one with 175 yards of total offense and a pair of scores. Alvin Kamara rounds out my top 10. He's seen just 17 carries and eight targets in his last two games combined, and he saw 18 and 10 respectively in week eight's game against Vegas. Without opportunities, there's a little bit of risk here, but the Saints need a win in the worst way, so I believe that forces them to feed their best playmaker. Ramondre Stevenson is up next. He could be in for another massive workload if Damian Harris cannot go yet again. Now the Jets have been hard against the run. They allow just four yards per carry. That is fifth best in the league, but I'm gonna roll with the volume and the touchdown potential. My last running back one of the week is Damian Pierce. He headlines tier number four. He scored in just one out of his last four games as this Houston offense caps his potential. It looks like Chase Young is probably gonna return for Washington this week, so an already good defensive front is gonna get even better. I think that there is a lower floor for him in this game than he's probably had in the last month, so you have to hope that he breaks a long one. Miles Sanders is next at 13. He saw just one carry in the first half last week against Washington, an extremely puzzling decision by that Philly coaching staff. Wonder why they lost the game. Philly corrects their mistakes. They give Sanders some more work here. That is great for owners. Now, unfortunately, those extra looks come against the second run ranked defense in the NFL. Tony Pollard is next, he's in at 14. He paid off my higher than consensus ranking of him last week with another top seven performance, which was his second in a row. If he is the guy here once again against Minnesota, he is going to produce, but the Vikings allow the sixth fewest points per game to backs, so it will not come easy. To the top of tier five, Aaron Jones sits at 15. He slides here because of the savage matchup against the Titans. They are the fourth ranked run defense in the NFL. Tennessee allows just 16 and a half points per game to the position. And magically, the Packers passing game actually exists. So there's a chance he does not see the opportunities that managers are hoping for. Donta Foreman is in at 16. He will continue to live and die by the game script, and that does not favor him here in this matchup against Baltimore. He's either gonna post a top 10 performance and get 25 plus carries, or face plant as the Panthers offense struggles. Jamal Williams is up next. He is the RB 13 on the season, carrying this Lions offense on his back for much of the year. He has not dropped outside of the top 20 in three straight games, but this excellent Giants defensive front is gonna put that to the test. Devin Singletary is my next man up. He just posted his best game of the year since way back in week three, scoring twice in the first half against Minnesota. The issue here is that Buffalo, for whatever reason, refuses to commit to the running game, and had he not scored, he racked up just 47 yards on 14 touches. In at 19 is David Montgomery. He will see a massive workload from here on out with Khalil Herbert landing on IR. Monty is going to need to pick it up in the efficiency department, though, if that is going to mean a whole lot. He hasn't cracked the top 30 in three straight weeks. To round out my top 20 at the top of tier six is Antonio Gibson. He has refused to go quietly into that good night, posting a top 16 finish in three out of his last four after being basically left for dead by me included. He will split this game with Robinson if he's lucky, but we know that he at least gets the passing game work and we know we love running backs against Houston. His teammate Brian Robinson is next. He is in line for another strong performance with this great matchup. He could crush this ranking if he can find the end zone once again, and the volume is more than enough for him to be an RB2 in fantasy land. He had 26 carries last week against Philly. Najee Harris is in at 22. I think the whispers of Jalen Warren taking over may have been a little bit overblown, but Harris is certainly losing work to Warren. He saw 12 touches in week 10, which was Warren's most all season. Najee had 99 yards on the ground last week. That was his best performance by far, but I think it's hard for him to continue his late season surge against a top 10 Bengals rushing D. In at 23 and at the top of tier seven is James Conner, who was not efficient by any stretch of the imagination last week, but he did score a pair of touchdowns, elevating himself to an overall RB5 finish. Count your blessings from last week, Pray for a score against San Francisco. He's gonna earn every yard that he gets in this game. 
Cordero Patterson is my last RB2 in week 11. He was supposed to put up a respectable stat line at worst in a great matchup against Carolina, but that certainly did not materialize. He touched the ball just six total times. And what that means is even in this top five matchup, I think he is hard to trust. The Falcons are clearly limiting his touches, but if he gets double digit opportunities, he will smash this ranking. At 25, I have DeAndre Swift. Speaking about limited touches, he cannot be trusted one iota after the Lions refuse to give this guy the ball. Swifty has 22 touches over his last three games combined. That is not gonna work. Now he is a top 25 guy because we know on one touch he can take it to the house, but I am not rolling the dice on him if I do not have to. Up at 26 is Isaiah Pacheco. He got a big workload against Jacksonville and he made the most of it. He racked up 82 yards on 16 carries. If that volume remains consistent, he is a smash RB2 moving forward, but that is a big if, we know that. But hey, you have to dream. At 27, it is Kenyon Drake who posted a huge game prior to the bye. However, it looks like Gus Edwards may return and completely ruin any chances of consistent production moving forward. I love this matchup. I just wish I knew who was getting the touches in Baltimore's backfield. To the top of tier eight, and at 28 is Michael Carter. He's gonna have his work cut out for him against New England. The Patriots allowed just over 15 points per game to the position, second best in the NFL. It is very likely that the Jets lean on him. I'm just not sure if it pays off. Elijah Mitchell is up next at 29. He might be more involved moving forward than any of us had thought. He had 20 opportunities against the Chargers. Now, depending on what happens in this game, whether it is a fluke or not, he could enter weekly flex considerations. At 30 is Gus Edwards. He is back this week, according to coach John Harbaugh, who hasn't exactly been very forthright with his information, to be fair. We'll see if it actually comes to fruition. If he goes, he is a solid upside flex play. In at 31 is Melvin Gordon. I think he has a solid shot here against a flailing Vegas defense, but he's gonna need more opportunities to truly fight back to relevancy. He's averaging just seven and a half touches per in his last four games. The last running back I have in week 11 is Tyler Algier. He is going to hit at this ranking if he sees a decent workload. And with the Falcons snap counting Cordero Patterson, that feels likely. I love his floor against the Bears. And that is everything that I have for week 11's running back rankings. Let me know how I did. Drop any comments or questions you have down below. I love the engagement and it is one of the main reasons I do these videos. Also be aware, I do have updated rankings coming out on Saturdays. I do these as shorts so you can get all my updated rankings, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, kicker, and I do defenses. And you can watch all of that content in about five minutes on Saturday. These videos take into account all the information that we have got in the middle of the week. Some of that I do miss because I do these ones earlier. So players shift dramatically sometimes and all of that information will be in my updated rankings videos. While you're there, drop a like on those videos as well. And a quick shout out to all of my current subscribers. Really appreciate you guys continuing to support me. The growth that we have seen is so awesome and I could not do any of that without you. Crush that like button if you enjoyed the content and if you haven't done it yet, what are we doing here? Get on it and subscribe to the channel. If you do not subscribe, you're gonna miss some of the great content that I put out weekly. I'm doing over 12 videos every week and I do not want you to miss a thing. This is Relentless Press. I am your host, Abraham Opatz, and I will see you next time.